Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're finally going to revisit the 2004 Dodge Viper. I'll show you exactly what broke and I'll show you how you can fix it on your car. If you watched my previous video, you know that I alluded to the fact that the 2004 Dodge Viper finally suffered a broken part. Now, I haven't had this car all that long, and it was extremely misrepresented to me by the dealership that sold it to me. But overall, it's been pretty good. I've done a few improvements to the car and fixed a few things the dealership omitted, but otherwise, the car is mostly stock. The only major non-stock components on the car at the moment would be the differential gearing. I re-geared the rear end and we changed out the factory cat-back exhaust systems for Borla exhausts. When I did that, I actually had considered replacing the catalytic converters at the same time. But because the car only had 17,000 miles, I thought, why spend the money? It's probably not an issue. A quick drive to the coffee shop, however, proved otherwise. Now, imagine if you will, you're taking the car out for a less than 20 mile drive just to warm it up, get the fluids moving, and to get coffee. And before you've even gotten the coffee, you go to pull away from a stop sign and the car won't rev past 5,000 RPM. It feels like you're hitting a soft limiter for no apparent reason. And it was a very cold day, so I wasn't exactly pushing the car. So to notice this meant it was a drastic reduction in power and revolutions of the engine. So much so that I grabbed my coffee, went straight home, parked it, and started trying to diagnose what was wrong. As it turns out, there are four catalytic converters on the car, two on each side. Fortunately for me, when I installed the cat-back exhaust system, I decoupled the exhaust. The factory system runs down both frame rails, but then it crosses over behind the passenger compartment and comes out opposite sides with a balancing tube between the two sides of the exhaust. Because I had decoupled it, taken that part out, each side of the exhaust represented each side of the engine, and I was able to quickly tell that the driver side bank exhaust was putting out almost no air compared to the passenger side exhaust. That meant that something was obstructing the pipe, and the only thing that can really be in the way there is the catalytic converters. Now, I didn't record removing the driver's side of the exhaust because it's up against the wall of the shop, but this is what I found when I pulled down those catalytic converters. Now, apparently after Googling this, this is not that uncommon of a problem. Other people have had the same issue. And as I said, this car only has 17,000 miles on it. So as near as I can tell, this problem is either because of age, that the material within the catalytic converter has deteriorated simply with age and moisture and condensation, or because of all the cold starts the car has experienced throughout its lifetime because it is so low of miles. Now remember, the two things that wear on a vehicle the most are actually the things the collectors like about old vehicles, and that is time and miles. Now, the miles distance traveled doesn't actually wear on the car as much as the cycles, which is the cold starts of the car. So you can have a 20,000 mile car that is 20 years old, that has suffered far more abuse than a million mile 10 year old car. It all depends on the number of cycles and how those miles were accumulated. If those were highway miles with fewer cold starts and stops of the engine and less warm up and cool down of the components related to the engine, you're likely to get a better conditioned car with more miles on it. Now, in the case of this Dodge Viper, my guess would be most of its life has been spent indoors in a garage, not being driven, only fired up occasionally, probably only long enough for people to admire the exhaust note and to see that it runs, and then slowly murder the catalytic converters that I would later get. Now that I know this is the problem, I'm going to be replacing the four catalytic converters with two, and this will keep the emissions component in place, but it will simplify the system significantly because now I don't have to worry about part of a catalytic converter plugging up another part of a catalytic converter, and I will be able to properly improve the airflow to better match the Borla exhaust to improve the exhaust note. So this should be sort of a win-win situation after about a thousand bucks. So let's go ahead, get the side sill off of this side and see what we're dealing with. Now removing the side sill requires that you remove the Phillips head screws like this that are located at the back, along the inside of the door, and then inside the fender well in the front. They also require that you remove 
these little tiny 10 mil bolts that are along the bottom here sometimes they're there sometimes they've fallen out because they're basically just screws and they're not really secured and they rarely fit the right size wrench because usually they're getting bottomed out in parking lots and once you have all that removed there's two studs inside the top here that you have to remove a nut from now they're really hard to see but maybe if i turn you completely sideways and stick my flashlight in here you can see the farthest back one right there now that one isn't too bad to get to this one in the front is a pain because the plastic for the fender liner goes underneath the panel and you have to basically remove all the hardware and then pull this plastic which is really rigid out away from the panel and snap it out to the front so you can get a tool up to this very very front stud it's a huge pain in the butt but it's got to be done Now that we have the side seal out of the way, we can see the exhaust. So as you can see, I already have the Borla cap back on here that I installed last time. This is what deleted the crossover pipe that would have gone down that channel behind the passenger compartment and let me have just a straight shot for each bank of engine down each side of the car. Now, aside from the exhaust tip, the Borla muffler, we then have the factory catalytic converters. This is the secondary cat, the post cat, and that's the pre cat, the first one up there. Now that we're under the car, we can see the first O2 sensor through this gap here, and you can see the O2 sensor wire. So the O2 sensor on the outside is right there, and the inner O2 sensor is right up there on the collector. Now that one is before the V band right there, that band clamp which is what you need to take loose to take the cats off. So we don't have to pull that O2 sensor and we can pull this one with the assembly if we take the mounting bracket loose from the body of the car there rather than sliding it out of it. And then it makes it easier to reinstall on the new hardware and slide it all back into place. So you'll just want to dive through this hole here in the frame and get to that bolt on the band clamp, take that loose, unplug the O2 sensor, Take those two bolts out of the mount and just pull it right out of the side of the car. So now I'm going to try to do exactly that. Here we have the new one and the old one side by side. So the passenger catalytic converters actually weren't that bad. They still look like uh, real catalytic converters with no catastrophic failure inside. So I don't know, maybe it was a fluke on the driver's side, but seeing as many people have issues as uh, was on the forums, I would still be concerned about them. So I need to move the O2 sensor and this bracket over to the new pipe, and then we can reinstall it in the car. But I was noticing here that the factory system got so hot it burnt all the paint off of the frame, and there's the starting of some corrosion going there. So I'll be pulling this back apart in the not too distant future, treating that to inhibit the corrosion, and then putting some better heat reflective materials in here to keep that from coming back because that's where you could start to develop some serious rust issues, especially with these terrible looking welds. I'm pretty sure my girlfriend's very first welds were better looking than those welds. And I'm not even really sure why they welded this weird little band in here, but I need to get that cleaned up and the rust inhibited. So that'll have to be a project for another day. Let's go ahead and get the new piece in the car. Now that we have the two new catalytic converters installed, I want to fire the car up before we finish buttoning the rest of the project up. One of the problems that might have occurred is some damage to either the engine or the O2 sensors in having obstructed the entire half of the engine. 
So I want to ensure that everything's running well before we finish putting all of the finishing touches on the installation. I also want to hear what this sounds like now with a lot less obstruction in the exhaust system. So let's see if the car will start. Some time has passed since I fired the car up because it is now extra cold in the shop and I have omitted all of the swearing and tool throwing because I think I still have a problem. Now the car sounds a lot better, but I was definitely pretty upset to find out that it sounds better on the passenger side than it does better on the driver side. It feels like it's weaker and it seems like it's got a raw fuel smell to that side, which has me concerned that it has additional issues and those could range from anything simple to being like a burnt up O2 sensor to something substantial like damaged valves. So I won't know till I dive deeper into it. Hopefully this video will be useful for those of you who can keep it very simple and only have to deal with the catalytic converters in your project. But if you have to shovel more money into the hole like I do, stay tuned for the next video because it may get interesting depending what's broken. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.